G'day guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. Spanish Journal 669, Friday View for the House of Horror. The film I've chosen to review for you this Friday is a thriller from Australia, English language, released in the year 2010, directed by Patrick Hughes, and this film is called Red Hill. And the story for Red Hill is as follows. Constable Shane Cooper arrives in the small town of Red Hill in search of a quieter life. But on Cooper's first day with the Red Hill Police Department, a convicted murderer escapes from prison and heads straight for Red Hill to kill the man who put him there. One by one, the townsmen fall until Cooper discovers the shocking truth behind the convict and must challenge everything he believes in in order to stop the massacre and bring justice to Red Hill. So the movie centers upon a very young policeman. He has a very pregnant wife who's, who's going to give birth at any minute. So he wants to raise his child in a very peaceful community, so he goes to Red Hill. So on his first day at the Red Hill Police Department, there is news that has broken out that a convicted murderer has broken free of prison and is coming to Red Hill in order to seek out his own sense of revenge. So the at, to start with, it seems like he's just a madman, but as the movie progresses, Cooper, the main character, realises that there is a shocking truth that he has to uncover and come to terms with in order to serve justice to Red Hill once and for all. So that's all I'm going to give you on the synopsis. If you want to know more, please go out there and see this film for yourself. Now my thoughts on this movie. This one is very generic. It's very predictable, but I actually kind of enjoyed it. Now it is a very entertaining film, but as I said, it's very predictable, therefore it kind of takes the fun out of it a little bit. Now it is an Australian film, but it's got a heavy American influence, which I can forgive because I actually think it works in its favour. Now, it has Australian accents, so don't worry, it's not Americanized totally. But when I say it's got American influence, it has that Western feel to it. It, it feels like it's paying homage to classic Westerns in the, Ameri in the United States, and it's giving it, it a modern sort of twist and an Australian twist as well. So it kind of feels like a bushranger film at the same time. For those of you don't, who don't know what bushrangers are, it's kind of like the Wild West in Australia. So it does take a very strong genre of western and it does mix it in with a thriller genre and for the most part you know I thought it was enjoyable now the acting is a problem for me Ryan Quantin the main actor he's supposed to be a badass I really think you know uh, Ryan Quantin does not have any intimidating uh, value at all I think he doesn't really suit the role of a hero I'm not a huge fan of this guy um, he's more widely known in Australia for the acting performance he did in Home and Away which is a soap opera here in Australia and I don't think he's a great actor to be honest now, he's acted in other films like Dead Silence, which I thought he was okay in. I don't like his forced American accent. Uh, he's off True Blood, which I actually haven't seen, so I can't comment on that. So when he actually took the lead role in this film, I just didn't believe it too much. I actually feel that he's not a lead actor. But he does an okay job. I mean, it doesn't take you out of it, and I actually felt that the villain... Um, overshadows the, the hero of the film by a long way. So the supporting cast of Steve Bisley, I thought he did a really good job. He was more of a badass than Ryan Quanton. I thought Ryan Quanton just, he feels like a young sort of teenager and he feels really, really soft. So, sorry, my nose is very itchy. So for that, I actually thought Steve Bisley would have been better as the main character and maybe Ryan Quanton playing a, a supporting cast. So the rest of the cast, there's some familiar Australian actors in there. They all do a decent job, but the villain for me was the best part of the film. I thought he's an Aboriginal sort of guy. He was very familiar with the Outback, and I thought he had a lot of intimidating value to him. So, uh, yeah, the acting and the characters weren't too bad. They were very shallow, but the film is shallow. The film is just an entertaining film that you can watch with a group of friends on a Friday night. Now, the cinematography was very good. As I said, a strong throwback to Western um, from the United States in the past. Uh, you know, you've got the, the, the Outback setting. You've got horses, but it has a modern twist in it, so there's cars as well. So for a dying genre for me, Westerns, I like the fact that it modernised the westerns. So uh, fans of westerns will like this film. But um, yeah, very predictable. You can kind of know what is going to happen at the end. There's a twist that I liked. I thought the twist contributed to the film in a positive way. But it's nothing that's really going to blow you out of the water. You can kind of predict where this film is going. So that was my biggest problem with it. But apart from that, as I said, you know, I was surprised I enjoyed it as much as I did. And I'm sure a lot of people out there will as well. So this is going to come recommended. I wasn't expecting to like it, but I found it entertaining. So overall, I'm going to give it three stars. And definitely a movie I would recommend if you're bored or you need a film to watch with a few friends, a few uh, beers, and some, pop, um, sorry, and some popcorn. So three stars for Red Hill coming recommended. All right, guys, that's my review. Until next Friday, keep watching horror. I'll see you later.